Good day everyone. My name is Chijoke Olusa. I am from the Institute for Coastal and Marine Research, Nelson Mandela University. I'm here to give a talk titled Persistent Organic Pollutant in South African Extras. These are my presentation outline. I'm going to take you from pops and overview to monetary questions and recommendation. The adverse effect of persistent organic pollutants in the ecosystem has been a major subject of discussion all over the world. This class of chemicals were classified as POPs because they persist in the environment, possess the ability to be transported over long ranges, biomagnify across the food chain, and bioaccumulate in human and animal tissue. In May 17, 2001, a convention on POPs was ratified and entered into force by 152 countries. South Africa became a party to the convention in September 2001. The principal objective of the convention is to protect humans, animals and the environment from POPs contamination with the intent of stopping their production and usage. Some of the adverse effects of POPs include cancer, immune system suppression, decrements in cognitive and neurobehavioral function, disruption of sex steroid and thyroid functions. Twelve POPs named Dirty Dozen were banned in some convention with effect from 2004, while in 2009, nine additional chemicals tagged Nasty 9 we added to the Stockholm Convention list. This is a list of banned chemicals. First, dirty dozen. They constitute of pesticides, industrial chemicals, and byproducts. Pesticides include adrenaline, chlorine, DDT, diandrine, endrine, heptachlor, hexachlorobenzene, myrex, and toxaphane. While industrial chemicals include hexachloro benzene and polychlorinated biphenyl. Dioxins and furans are the byproducts. While this is a list of chemicals tagged as nasty nine, this nasty nine group of chemicals are made up of pesticides, industrial chemicals, and byproducts. What are the potential sources of POPs in South African extraries? 1. Agricultural return flow. As seen in literature, pesticides are used in the cultivation of food crops in some extraries catchment. The heavy rainfall experienced during spring season is likely to increase atmospheric deposition and wash off pesticides from agricultural land into the extraries, thereby increasing the pollution load. Another, sources of, another source of POPs in South African extraries is wastewater from wastewater treatment works. It was reported in the South African National Biodiversity Report of 2018 that approximately 840 million liters of wastewater from wastewater treatment works is entered into South African extraries per day. In a study conducted by Salahuddin et al. 2018, High amounts of talit were detected in samples of wastewater treatment plants located in East Ekin province. Other sources of pubs in SA estuaries include solid waste discharge, which are composed of liters and plastics, urban runoff, and OSPs from shipping activities. Organochlorine pesticide in South African extraries. An example of an, of an OCP group of chemical is a DDT, which is dichloro, diphenyl, trichloroentine. This is a colorless, odorless, and tasteless insecticide. As earlier mentioned, the OCP chemicals are used in agriculture for pest control. OCPs such as aldrin, diadrin, and endrin were introduced in South Africa in 1950. Why DDT, heptachlor, chlorine, and toxaphene 
were introduced in 1942, 1946, 1948, and 1949, respectively. Some reports in literature show that as at 2017, DDT were used for mosquito control in some areas in KwaZulu Natal and in Pomalanga provinces. DDT was still formulated in South Africa and exported to other African countries until mid 2010. Agricultural return flow and improper disposal of pesticide containers are potential sources of OCPs in South African extras. This slide shows the concentration of OCPs in surface water from South African extras. Assessment has only been conducted in three extraries in South Africa, which is the Buffalo River Extrary, Sundays and Swartkop Extraries. For Buffalo River, three samples were, were taken across two seasons and 17 OCP were analyzed. While for Sundays and Swartkops, 50 samples were taken across the four seasons and 18 OCPs were analyzed. Levels reported for Buffalo were higher than those reported for Swartkops and Sundays. However, a risk asset model revealed that water from swart cups and sundays are not suitable for oral consumption but can be used for skin washing due to the level of OCP contamination. This is another graph showing the concentration of OCPs in sediment from South African extras. Analysis of OCPs in sediment has only been conducted in six extras in South Africa namely Swartkops, Sundays, Kosi Bay, St. Lucian, Umgane River, and Durban Bay. A comparison with sediment quality guideline revealed that Gamma HCH, which is Lindane, in Sundays and Swartkops extraries, has a higher potential of causing adverse effects to aquatic organisms. Examples of such organisms include fish, algae, aquatic microphytes, and other invertebrates. PCBs in South African extras. PCBs are made up of two fused benzene rings with chlorine atom resonating in the auto, meta, and para position. PCBs are widely used as dielectric fluids in electrical equipment such as capacitors and transformers due to their insulating and cooling properties. According to a report published by the Department of Environmental Affairs in 2012, ESCOM has about 17,086 PCBs containing pieces of your equipment which are made up of transformers, capacitors, and auxiliary equipment, containing more than 50 mg per liter of PCB concentration. Their presence in environmental matrices is believed to be from leakages from old electronic equipment, improperly disposed transformers, import of electronic waste from developed countries, illegal dumping of plastic materials containing PCBs, shipwrecks, and biomass incineration. This is a graph showing the concentration of PCBs in surface water from South African extraries. PCB levels have been detected in surface water from Swartkops, Buffalo River, and Sundays extraries. Levels of PCBs recorded in Swartkops extraries were higher than those reported for Buffalo and Sundays extraries. PCB levels in surface water from all studied extraries exceeded the maximum residual limit of 500 nanograms per liter in drinking water. An extensive exposure for a long period of time may result in skin disorders and immune system deficiencies in humans. This is another graph showing the concentration of PCBs in sediment from South African extraries. Levels in sediments of swart cups were higher than those reported for Sundays, Durban Bay, and Umgene River in that order. In comparison to Canadian sediment quality guidelines, PCBs in sediment were above the acceptable value of 21.5 nanogram per gram dry weight, thus indicating a probable toxic effect on aquatic organisms. This is a third graph showing the concentration of PCBs in fish tissues from South African extraries. Levels in fish tissues were below the United States Food and Drug Administration limit of 2,000 nanogram per gram wet weight thus suggesting a low health risk when this fish species is consumed. Other pollutants of emerging concern. First of all, let's talk about the PBDAs. 
which is polybrominated diphenyl ethers. PBDs are likely to enter the South African environment during the manufacturing or use of brominated flame retardant product. It was reported that PBD levels in sediments of Durban Bay were higher than those reported for Sundays and Swatcop extraries. Other pollutants of imagic concern include the perfluorooctanoic acids and the perfluoroacyl substances. This class of chemicals are found in food packaging materials and industrial electronic devices. Although they have received less attention from scholars in South Africa, probably because of their high cost of analysis. Perfluorooctanoic acid levels in Imovoti and Amatigul extracts exceeded the US EPA health advisory levels of 0.07 nanogram per liter in drinking water. Prolonged exposure could result to thyroid diseases as well as kidney and testicular cancer. PAHs, which is polyaromatic hydrocarbon, are found in fossil fuel and they are released into the environment as derivatives of in combustion of organic materials. pH concentration in water and sediment of buffalo extract were above the regular limit of British Columbia. It was inferred by the author, by the author sorry, that the water system was conspicuously polluted. This is a map of South Africa showing the number of extracts evaluated for pups and their conditions with respect to international regulatory limits. Out of the 290 extracts present in the country, only 12 extracts have been evaluated for pups. Alphabet A, B and C represent surface water, sediment and fishes respectively. Where the alphabet is colored in red, it shows the pup level were above international regulatory limits, while where the alphabet is colored in blue, it shows the level were below international limits. OCPs in fish tissues from Kosi Bay and St. Lucian Extra exceeded the MRL of the European Commission, indicating a call for concern. Pesticides used for agricultural purposes in this region may be responsible for such a high pollution load. We can see that levels of OCPs, PCBs, in sediment from Ungele River were below international regulation limits, while levels of PCBs and PEHs in surface water from Buffalo River were above international regulatory limits. PBD's levels in the three environmental matrices collected from Swartzkopf's and Sunday X-ray were below international limits. However, PBDs in surface water collected from these X-rays were above international limits. We can see that very little research has been done on POPs levels in X-rays in South Africa. Priorities X-rays for POPs investigation. Prioritization is an essential step for identifying X-rays most likely to be polluted by POPs and where there is a high risk to humans and environmental health. In our recent article, extras with very high pollution rating based on their exposure to urban and agricultural runoff and those with wastewater input from wastewater treatment works were considered as priority for pop investigation. This is a hierarchical cluster analysis showing a dendrogram of priority extras for pops monitoring separated by different clusters based on their respective pollution sources. Cluster analysis was um, analyzed using average link linkage group and we scale distant cluster combined. <coughs> cluster analysis group extracts into eight subclusters based on their pollution sources. Cluster one consists of extracts exposed to agricultural return flow, except for good and olifants, which are recipients of effluent from wastewater treatment works. Cluster 2 consists of extras exposed to both agricultural and urban runoff. While extras exposed to wastewater from wastewater treatment works 
an agricultural runoff are grouped in cluster 3, except for Klein, which was connected to cluster 4. Cluster 4 comprises of extracts that are recipients of wastewater from wastewater treatment works, urban and agricultural runoffs. Majority of extracts in this cluster are from the KZN province. Extracts in cluster 5 are those exposed to urban runoff. Great K in cluster 6 and other extracts in 7 represent extracts polluted only by effluent from wastewater treatment works. About 79% of extracts in cluster 8 are located in the KZM province. These extracts are urban runoff and wastewater from wastewater treatment works. In total, Northern Cape has 2 extracts, Western Cape has 21 extracts, Eastern Cape has 10 extracts, and KwaZulu Natal has 32 extracts, giving the total of 65 extracts indicated for POPs investigation based on their exposure to potential pollution sources. In this table, organic pollutants were placed in groups based on their ability to occur in high concentration in pollution sources. Apart from OCPs, organophosphate pesticides and carbon meat were considered for analysis in X-ray matrices exposed to agricultural return flow. These chemicals were placed in group 1. In group 2, extracts whose main pollution sources are wastewater from wastewater treatment works and likely to contain low concentration of halogenated contaminants. Being strongly hydrophobic, a greater fraction of these pollutants are likely to be trapped on particulates and sludge solids during treatment process. Therefore, hydrophilic compounds such as PFAS, PPCPs, which are the personal care and pharmaceuticals, and organophosphate flame retardants, were given monitoring priorities to extracts exposed to wastewater from wastewater treatment works. These chemicals were placed in group 2. For group 3, chlorinated compounds, phenolic derivatives, and phthalates were given monitoring priorities to extraction matrices exposed to runoff from urban development. These contaminants were placed in group 3. So we are seeing all the extracts that were grouped into clusters, as you can see at the far right of the table should be analyzed for these chemical compounds based on their exposure to potential pollution sources. This is just a map of priority extracts for POPs investigation and monitoring. The colored symbols indicate extracts with very high pollution rating based on their exposure to urban and agricultural runoff and those that receive wastewater from wastewater treatment works. This is just a summary of the previous two slides. So, as you can see, 10 extracts were exposed to agricultural or rather agricultural return flow and should be analyzed for POPs in group 1. 12 extracts were exposed to urban runoff and should be analyzed for POP in group 3. Five extracts were exposed to wastewater from wastewater treatment works and should be analyzed for POPs in group 2. Ten extracts were exposed to agriculture, urban, and wastewater from wastewater treatment works and should be analyzed for, for extracts for POPs group in group 1 and 3. Nineteen extracts were exposed to urban and wastewater from wastewater treatment works and should be analyzed for POPs in group 3. Four extracts were exposed to both agriculture and urban runoffs and should be analyzed for POPs in group 1 and 3. Five extracts were exposed to agriculture and wastewater for wastewater treatment works and should be analyzed for POPs 
in group one and two. This is a table of monetary questions and answers. So we are, we are saying which X-rays are to be monitored for pups, and we are saying that X-rays with very high pollution ratings, based on their exposure to potential sources, should be considered as priority for pups investigation. What sample matches should be used for monitoring? We are saying air, surface water, sediments, as well as tissues of fish and other marine organisms should be used for monitoring. Where to sample in the extra areas? All areas covering the salinity region should be sampled. What numbers of sites should be considered for sampling? And we are saying that 5 points for extra is less than 5 km and 10 to 15 points for extra is longer than 5 km should be considered for sampling. So we are saying samples should be analyzed spatial temporarily and seasonally. While solid phase extraction, solid feed micro extraction, cloud point extraction, and creatures based techniques should be used as a pre concentration method during sample preparation of pups in their respective environmental matrices. Gas chromatography coupled with max spectrometry and other analytical instruments such as GC with tandem MS, liquid chromatography coupled with the max spectrometry, LC with tandem MS, GCH arrow MS, and GC by GC time of flight max spectrometry should be employed as analytical instrument for POPS analysis. This is because of their high sensitivity to trace and other trace level of POPS in their respective ever matrices. Microplastics and heavy metals should be, should be analyzed together with POPS or should be analyzed with POPS. Then surface water, fish, prawn and other edible species most likely to contempt due to their lipophilic properties should be, should be used or should be analyzed because these are critical vectors of POPS to humans. These are my references. Please try to go through them. Thank you for listening.